So, impact frames. You know when in anime the protagonist is getting all charged up or the villain is getting blown away and you have those really wild, mad few second moment when the visuals just explode on your screen? Yeah, that's what we're gonna be making today. So right off the bat, I have to tell you that this is very static setup, made specifically for those few second animation cuts and I don't think you could use it dynamically on a animated character. So with that in mind, let's start with the new Blender file. But before that, make sure to subscribe because we're trying to break that 1000 subscribers. I know it sounds like a ridiculously small number to even care about, but for me it's really important, so I'd really appreciate if you subscribed and enabled the notifications. And now let's go straight to the tutorial. So in the fresh scene, delete everything and import the mesh that you want to apply the effect onto. In my case it's gonna be this skeleton mesh that I found on the internet but feel free to use whatever you want. I deleted everything else because all I want to focus on is the head and first of all the most important part I think would be to set up the camera so shift A and bring in a camera. Now with the skeleton in frame hold down ctrl alt and click 0 on the numpad to get your view in the frame. Now click N to get this ribbon in the view tab check camera to view so that when you move then the camera view moves along with you. I chose a 1 to 1 aspect ratio but you can do it in panoramic view as well it doesn't really matter. If you want to change the aspect ratio go to the output tab and here in the format change the resolution to match whatever you want. So I'll keep it as square and also my frame rate is gonna be 30 fps just in case you're wondering. Now one more thing you can play with in this camera is in this camera settings you can play with the focal length so if you put it to something like 120 then you have this really almost orthographic look to it and on the contrary if you put it to something small like let's say 20 then you have a very distorted uh, perspective so depending on which look you're going for uh, feel free to adjust it. I believe the focal length from my intro was 120 so I'll stick with that. Now position your camera so that your character is fairly in the middle of the frame and leave a little bit of room for its jiggling and if you're happy with the setup simply uncheck this camera to view again and you can click zero to get out of the camera view. Now let's click in to get rid of this ribbon, drag in a new viewport, change it to shader editor and in this viewport change it to rendered preview. As you can see we cannot see anything because we don't have any lights in the scene but that's not a problem because anyway we will use an emission shader. So select the skeleton and click new to create a new material. Now delete the principled BSDF and add an emission shader so simply search for emission. To get rid of this ribbon simply click N as well. And now the skeleton shader itself is based on a Fernell node so let's add that. Then add a color ramp and connect it together. In order to preview the color ramp hold down Control shift and left mouse button on the node. In case it doesn't work for you, make sure that you have a node wrangler enabled. Go to edit preferences and then search for node wrangler. Make sure that it's enabled. It's gonna help us a lot with the shading editor. So now we can see in this viewport what our Fernell node does. And in order to get this anime cell shaded look, change the interpolation of the color ramp from linear to constant. And then drag the white value a little bit down and see what happens. First of all, let's bring down the index of refraction in our Fernell node maybe to something like 1.3 and then drag this white value somewhere right here and then change it to black. So now you should have all the skeleton black but that's not a problem because now we can add another color stop to our color ramp and make sure that it's in the middle and then change it from black to white. And now to adjust the look that you're going for simply play with this white value in between those blacks to get the desired look. I like to keep it close to the left side and then bring in this black value a little bit more so that we have a nice black and white quite harsh but also very well defined outlines of the mesh but depending on what you're going for you can always play with the index of refraction or the values in the color ramp so feel free to experiment now if you click play you can see that nothing really happens if you click zero to get into the frame uh, you can see the preview of your final animation and the next step that we're gonna do is make this skeleton uh, jiggle a little bit to make the whole scene look more dramatic and dynamic as well so with your character selected click i on the keyboard and and choose location and now in this shader editor change the type of the viewport to graph editor. As you can see because we clicked I we added a keyframe to the location of our object. We can control what it is on the X, Y and Z axis and because we wanted to jiggle and not do any specific movement we can get away with just using a simple noise modifier so click N to get this ribbon and select the X axis 
and then go to the modifiers tab and add a noise modifier. Now if you click play you can see that it jiggles on the x-axis which is amazing but obviously it goes way too far uh, to the left and right and in order to adjust that bring down the strength of the noise until you feel satisfied. So you can play the animation and then play with the strength uh, 0.060 sounds good enough and now to add another layer of movement go to the z location and do the exact same thing so add modifier noise and then bring down the strength as much as you need in order to make it look nice so maybe something like 0.04 and right now it looks a little bit buggy so in order to refine it even further we can change the scale this will make the noise uh, more frequent if that makes sense to visualize it we can bring down the scale to one and you can see the graph right here and as we bring the scale up um the noise is getting less and less frequent so we have those like longer pauses between uh, each extreme position but if we put it to like 0.3 then it happens so fast that we cannot really see the interpolation in between so with the strength like 0.04 you can see that we have this jiggly movement which is exactly what we want for our impact frame now let's do the same with the z location and with this step done we can switch back to the shader editor and now we have very strong and harsh contrast we have the aggressive jiggling but to make these visuals even more intense we can also invert the colors back and forth real fast that will really emphasize this oh my god what's going on feeling of the sequence so add a value node and then a math node and connect one to another and change the math node from add to ping pong then let's add another node right after connect it like so and change it from ping pong to snap now the last node is gonna be invert and what this basically does it inverts the colors that we have so let's pause it for a little bit connect the color ramp into the invert color and preview the invert right now and as you see the factor one inverts the colors of our shader and value zero keeps it at the old one and in between it goes through this gray which we don't want at all and that is why we have this snap so let's set the ping pong scale to two and then snap increment to one because we want this to snap to either zero or one now connect the snap value into the invert factor and the invert color can go into the emission color and then we can preview the emission and now if you click play you can see that nothing is happening because this value that we have at the very beginning stays at zero throughout the whole animation but if we want it to change over time we have to add a driver so type in hashtag frame which is gonna take the value of the frame on which the animation is currently on and then we can divide it by some small number like two and you can immediately see that we have this sort of stroboscope effect going on in here so the character is done now let's take care of the background and the foreground so click zero in this viewport to get out of the camera view and shift a add a mesh plane now rotate it on x-axis by 90 degree and position it behind the object make sure that it's positioned in a way that when you go into the camera preview it covers all the background now as is the background we can name it accordingly and in the shader editor click new to add a new material same as before delete the principled bsdf and add a emission shader now there is almost unlimited possibilities as to what do you want the background look like but we will stick to the simple one that you've seen in the previous scene so just the straight lines going up and down so for that we will need a noise texture and with the noise texture selected click ctrl t to get a mapping and texture coordinate node now make sure to change the texture coordinate from generated to object and add a value math node and combine xyz change the math node to divide and connect them together like so the value goes into the math node and then to y and z and then the result of the divide goes into x and the result of combine xyz goes into the scale change the value to one and now to see what we are actually doing let's add a color ramp plug it to the noise texture and let's preview what that looks like change the interpolation again from linear to constant to have this nice crisp contrast and bring down the white values until you have some pattern going on behind now the setup that we've done right here with these three nodes let's us stretch the noise on the specific axis that we chose so in my case i chose x uh, which is wrong because as you can see it's stretching uh, sideways not up and down so i need to change it and instead of x it goes into the y and then the value goes into the x and now as you can see as i increase this divide value my noise behind is stretching up and down so i'll keep it quite high and also in order to have more of a pattern going on behind we can bump up the scale of the noise texture something like maybe 20 and then depending on what you're going for you can also bring in the detail quite high and the roughness as well 
if you want those sort of jagged uh, lines behind. And then you can also play with the distortion if you want uh, more of a thin, smaller lines. I leave it up to you. You can go for whatever you want. And then this color ramp controls how much of the pattern you can see. So this white slider basically uncovers the pattern until it uh, takes over the whole plate. So I'll keep it at something like this. And let's plug this color ramp into the emission and preview the emission as our final shader. Now we can click play to preview how it looks like. And as you can see, the background is very static so let's fix it right away. Also you may have noticed that I have this bloom going on uh, whenever the skeleton is white and if you want to have this effect as well just go to the render settings and enable bloom and then as you increase the emission strength in any of the shader it will cause it to shine sort of like a light source. In case you're wondering it's there. I'll keep it at one though and let's move to animating our background. So in the mapping node what we want is we want to alter the location z value. As you can see it gives us the effect that we're going for so simply get and type in hashtag frame and then divide it by something like 20 see if it looks right if it doesn't you can always adjust it the bigger the number the slower the background's gonna move so if i put it to like a thousand you can see that it's moving very slow and i discovered that 20 is a quite a good value for what i'm going for now with this done let's pause it for a bit the last thing we want to do is the foreground effect so in this viewport click zero again to get out of the camera view and we can duplicate this background so shift d and then move it on the y-axis to make sure that it's in front of the object this time let's also change the name to not get confused later and in the shader editor click this copy icon to duplicate this material and change the name to foreground as well. Now one important thing we have to do in here is make it transparent because as you can see it hides our mesh. So in order to do that go into the material settings and firstly change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip and then in the shader we will need additional nodes such as transparent bsdf and a mix shader node. Now connected like so transparent goes into the mix shader on top emission on the bottom and now the factor is gonna be the mask which is gonna tell us which parts are visible and which one is invisible. So if we preview the color ramp you can see that we have black and white values simply black is gonna be transparent and white is gonna be opaque. So we can already preview how that looks like simply connect it to the mix shader factor and as you preview the mix shader you can see that the mesh is hidden behind these big white patches so let's fix that right away uh, in this value at the beginning of our graph let's bump up the scale to like 10 which is gonna make our lines much much smaller much finer and it basically is gonna tile our noise texture 10 times more so if we already click play you can see that it gives us some sort of cool effect if that's what you're going for again as i said many times Feel free to experiment. A lot of great results are happening when you're just playing with the values. But in order to make it closer to what you've seen in the intro to this video, we need to make some changes to the noise texture node. So first of all, bring down the scale to like seven. And actually in order to see better what we're actually doing with this foreground selected, you can simply click shift and H, which is gonna hide everything except for the object that you have selected. But don't worry, it didn't disappear anywhere. You can always make it visible by checking this eye icon. So now let's bring down the distortion to zero and also the roughness quite a bit down. Now we can also bring down the divide second value so that the stripes are not as stretched as the one in the background and also because it's foreground I chose the color to be red in order to make this stand out a bit more. So let's copy the color ramp right here and connect the noise texture again and change this color from white to something red and now connect this color ramp color into emission and this color ramp on top stays connected into the mix shader as a factor. Now what this will give us is it will give us chance to have this red pattern in front but we can also bring this value a little bit to the right in order to get this black outlines which is gonna if we now enable the skeleton again make this stand out on this weight background a little bit more i know it's a very subtle change but i feel like it makes a difference now we can already enable all of the layers and see how it looks like so that that's very close to the final effect that we are going for. If you feel like the red lines are a little bit too much, then you can always play with this color ramp to make it less prominent. And then again, bring this a little bit here to still have the black outline. Now, because it's all so hectic and visually explosive, we don't really see what is gonna be rendered and whatnot. So in order to make it more clear, you can go to the camera and then the camera settings and in the viewport display, bring this slider all the way to the right. And that will make it so that everything that's gonna be rendered is gonna be clear and everything else is just fade to black so you have a better preview of what your final look is gonna look like. Now in order to add this red outline of the skeleton which I added because I felt like it needed a little bit more visibility we can go back to the skeleton mesh and then in the shader editor we can copy this color ramp that goes from the Fresnel node connected like so and get rid of 
all these values except for two and change it from white to red and let's preview that so we can see what we're actually doing so we want only the outlines of the mesh to be red to improve the readability of our effect so maybe something like this and in order to comp this onto our original mesh we will need to add a mix rgb node and then we want this to stay on top so we have to add it after the invert because we don't want this red color to be inverted as well so connect the invert to first color and then the result of our red color ramp into the second one and now we can plug the result into the emission and see what's going on so as you can see we have this factor value which again is gonna switch between one input which is gonna be the red outline and the other input which is the original version of our mesh and what we want is we want the original mesh everywhere except for where the outline happens but if we connect this color ramp right into factor like so you can see that it doesn't work as we want. I mean, if you zoom in, you can see that there is a little bit of this very pale red. I'm not sure if you can see it through the YouTube compression, but that is basically because the red, when converted into the grayscale, is not a white, so of value one. So it doesn't actually do what we want. So, And in order to fix that, we will need a math node to amplify this value. So change it from add to multiply. And now as you increase the multiply value, you can see that this red is being more and more visible. So you can increase it to something high in order to make sure that this value is multiplied enough and then to make sure that it doesn't exceed the one you can click this clamp button and that should give you the result that we're going for so now as you can see the effect is still very hectic very explosive but we can clearly see what's going on what's the outline of our character and the readability is not hurting even though a lot is going on in here now there's a lot of artistic choices you can make with like making the emission strength etc and i will leave it to you but one thing i will mention is as you can see the emission if you bring it up in here it's gonna make the emission of all the values increase uniformly but what you can also do is we can go directly into the color ramp with the red outline and in this red color as you increase the value to let's say 10 it will make so only the red outline will glow while the rest will have the emissiveness of one so that's just a little trick that you can use for your advantage not sure if you need it but i'm just putting it out there in case you want it and so yeah just like that we arrive to the end of the tutorial it was a very basic and simple impact frame i'm not sure if i will make some other in the future let me know in the comment if you'd be interested in content like that or if you have specific designs of impact frames that you would like to see how to make in blender i'll see what i can do and for now i will only mention that the blender scene that you've seen in the intro is available on gumroad for free but if you've made it so far into this tutorial then i'm sure you're capable of creating something like this by yourself so make sure to tag me on twitter uh, if you make something cool out of it, I would really love to see what you come up with. Uh, the link to my Twitter is in the description. And with all that said, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something and see you in the next one. Bye bye.